I'm Shannon Baldioli. I'm an educator at the National Air and Space Museum. Teaching with objects is what we do every day in museums, but it works just as well in the classroom. Using objects with your students is a great way to make abstract concepts more concrete for learners of all types. The National Air and Space Museum has thousands of objects that celebrate the history of aviation and spaceflight. From moon rocks and spacesuits to rocket planes and kites, our objects tell stories of ingenuity and perseverance. Teaching with objects doesn't just happen in the museum. Object-based learning is a tool that any educator can use, no matter what subject they teach. Collecting is something that museums do, but it's also something that people do. Everyone has those things that they collect. Giraffe figurines, travel memorabilia, wine corks, or band t-shirts. The objects we collect are personal and help tell the stories of who we are. When astronauts go to space, they often take a piece of home with them. Since there's limited room on their spacecraft, often there are small trinkets and mementos of life at home. One of the most famous personal objects that went to space went with astronaut Alan Shepard on the Apollo 14 mission in 1971. Shepard took the head of a six iron golf club to be assembled with a rock collection tool when he got to the moon. Though it was tough to golf in a spacesuit, he managed to make contact once, charming the viewing public with a decidedly terrestrial activity in one sixth gravity. Using objects in the classroom is a great way to introduce new topics, connect abstract ideas to concrete things, and scaffold the learning for your students. It's fun to give students interesting objects found at thrift stores, in the back of a closet, or in the drawers of grandma's old sewing machine. In front of me are some objects from our teaching collection at the museum. I like to show students objects and see what questions they have to drive the learning experience. Letting them observe, handle, and explore objects may spark questions you hadn't even thought of. When they make observations, they should justify them with evidence. I'm gonna walk you through an activity with one of our objects. We're going to take a look at an alien object today. You probably haven't seen it before, but we're going to work together to figure out what it's used for. Take a close look at this object and note what you see. You can either write it down or just think about it. Feel free to move the object around and experience it with your senses, though I don't recommend tasting. Is it natural or man-made? What is it made out of? Is it part of something or a whole? Have you ever seen anything like it before? What might it be used for? Is this something special or something you'd use every day? Asking what makes you say that gives students the opportunity to verbalize their thoughts. Some of the answers may seem obvious to students, but it helps them talk about their thinking out loud. Students will quickly point out that the materials are man-made ones like metal, elastic, and Velcro. It may be tricky to decide if it's a piece of something or not, but this might create a lively discussion. When I do this activity with students, I put them in groups of three to five and give each group a different object. Groups can decide what they think it is, then rotate to the next object. Encourage students to think about their prior experiences. Have they ever used something like this? When and where? Making personal connections deepens the learning and may help solve the mystery of our alien object. Have you figured out what it is yet? This is a food tray like the ones used during the space shuttle program. The Velcro and elastic bands on the tray keep things like meal packets and utensils from floating away. Notice how it folds down for easy storage? Room for storage is at a premium on a trip to space, so it's important to design things that can either serve many purposes or that can collapse and store easily. Once your students are comfortable looking critically at new objects, an activity like this can be used at many points throughout a unit. Maybe you're introducing your students to an historical figure or author. Create a drawer or closet that might belong to that person and have students figure out who it belongs to based on what's in it. Maybe you're starting a new science unit on weather. Put a variety of scientific tools on a table and see if students can figure out how they work. Things like thermometers and weather vanes may be familiar to students, but other instruments like barometers and anemometers may not. You can even use object lessons with students in the wild. When on a museum visit or other field trip, challenge students to compare objects. I like to give students a random object from around the house and let them loose in a museum to find something that relates to it or reminds them of it. Good luck using objects and object-based learning in your classrooms.